How's it going everyone? Welcome to our Elite Battle League Week 5 Roundup. This week was uh, quite the intense week. Uh, obviously this was to wrap up your playoff spot if you were a competitor, a coach. Uh, this was to wrap up that spot for the playoffs to try and figure out who you're going to be matching up against, whether you had a buy or whether you weren't going to have a buy or you know a quote unquote easier matchup, so on and so forth. Therefore these matches this week were pretty pretty intense um <laughs> but before we get into all that of course check out all the coaches in the description down below all their links are down every sure to check them out uh if you just happen to support one of them maybe you watch their content regularly maybe you'll start supporting their team heading into playoffs and root for them as we get closer and closer to championship week uh but of course i am your host a lonely hermit and i am joined by my other Beautiful co-host, uh, Mr. Landon, aka Infernoman. How you doing today, my dude? Pretty good. He's a man of many words. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's just like hop, let's just hop right into it. I mean, may as well, right? Uh, of course, like I said, check out everything. All that good stuff will be in the description down below. So check all that good stuff out. Sorry, this is a day late, by the way, but you know it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> to head into the first matchup, the I believe what third match this season that's gone to, to the time limit, um, the Miami Dragonites versus the Atlanta Braviary. Good on. Mr. Stone Family 64. This is the second big win he's gotten over the top two people in the league. So that is pretty big heading into playoffs. Uh, the, the Braviary, uh, along with another team, are building a lot of momentum heading into playoffs at the perfect time. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, despite winning, they still couldn't quite push for the bye. Um, but like I said, the Atlanta Braviary walked away with a win in this one. Uh, right away, a, uh, Ace again led for the Miami Dragonites. Um, a nice little announcement for Ace is coming later on the video, by the way. We'll get to that later. Uh, Ace starts off with Miami again. You could tell that one Echo is probably pretty pretty comfortable with how strong Cinder Ace is to lead off. That's the second week in a row. Uh, and again, the Braviary lead off with Dialga, I believe. Yeah, so it was quite the utility Dialga. It, it had Stone Edge, it had like multiple other things. It had, ended up having to go against Contrary Shuckle, which is what, uh, what the Dragon I switched into from the beginning. Um, the Sh I believe Shuckle was toxic went on to kill Lapras after it kills Shuckle. So they traded blows for the first kills of the games. There was quite a bit of switching at first, there's a little bit of setting up and stuff, uh, but eventually it ended with Shuckle and Lapras on the field and they traded blows. Shuckle toxic Lapras, Lapras killed um, Shuckle, and then eventually that same turn, uh, Lapras went down to the toxic. Uh, and there was just a lot of switch tactics going around. This is a very tactical match. It was a very back and forth match, especially when it came to the switches, like I mentioned. Uh, it was very back and forth. Uh, I believe, yeah, so there was a burn from the Toxpex onto Vile Plume, which caused some changes to go around. Eventually, Scizor came in for the Vile Plume. Uh, Stone switched to, to Volcarona. Um, Scizor did get a, a Swords Dance off, and again, this time though, this time he did reuse the Baton Pass strategy, went into Rayquaza, went to Rayway. Uh, however, it, it happened again. Uh, Rayquaza killed Volcarona, but Volcarona had Flame Body, which burned Rayquaza. Of course, uh, that's the second time this has happened. And again, it's another situation where maybe it could have made a difference in the match because again, we see that Ray Ray has to get sacked off because there's no point in keeping it alive. It's burned, it's attack is have. I believe it only had physical moves. Uh, so Mammoth Swine goes down, uh, Mammoth Swine takes down the Ray Ray. And unfortunately, that's another match where it had to get sacked because there's just no point in keeping it alive. Uh, Scizor came in to finish off Age. I'm um, sorry, Mammoth Swine. Uh, Age of Slash came in, and it's funny because literally everyone keeps saying that they're expecting King Shield. Uh, I don't think he's Stones even brought it, but everyone's expecting it still. Uh, Swords Dance. It managed to get a Swords Dance off. Uh, it one shots Venusaur after it gets brought in, and Ace comes in to try and finish the Age of Slash, which it succeeds. Uh, but ultimately, Dialga comes in for Ace. So what he does is, uh, what I call U turns out um into scissor and it dies came came in and died uh and then G this is where it, it really teetered out here because gmax cinder ace came in um and the thought process for one was that he max steel spike for defense uh of course that's not gonna hit dialga for anything um and he never actually used fireball i guess maybe because he felt it wouldn't have made a difference uh, whether it would have or not, I don't know. It's it's tough to say. I get the reasoning. You're trying to keep Cinderace alive. 
Um, but who knows? Maybe the G Max Fireball, whatever it's called, would have done a lot of damage to the dog. Would have killed it. I don't know. Then again, Cinderace wasn't exactly the, had the most health. Uh, but beyond that, it ended up reaching the time limit. Uh, that's the second match for Miami where it reached a time limit as well. Um, and the Bravery were able to walk away with a 5 4 win. Uh, pretty impressive, I will say. Stone really impressed me this week. I thought that was a great matchup. Uh, what'd you think of this matchup here? Honestly, the outcome uh, uh, wasn't expected. Um, I know I, at least, I'm pretty sure you said the same. Yeah, that, I did. Panaco um, was going to win last week, and uh, that didn't happen. So. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was really a match that turned itself on its head. Um, I thought that they were going pretty strong, and I was like, you know what, they're having a pretty good battle right now. Mm -hmm. It could go either way. Um, and then, you know, the burn on the Rayquaza kind of screwed Gwinako over, and uh, Matt ended up winning. So mm -hmm. uh, the outcome ended up being, like, not, not how I would have expected. Um, more intense than I would have expected. Um, yeah. But it's very... I, I'm... I'm actually happy for Matt. I've been Team Guanaco this season, but um, kudos to you, Matt. Two weeks in a row, you beat the top two teams. That's that's absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that's what impressed me the most. The fact that the the mm -hmm. rankings ended with uh, Miami and Chicago up top, and of course the Bravery beat both of them. So I think that's a really interesting thing that we need to keep an eye on heading into playoffs here. Uh, but speaking of the standings, that uh, win left the Bravery still in fourth. They couldn't quite get over the mountain that was the, uh, the negative KD that they had uh, because obviously it wasn't the biggest win. It was a great win, don't get me wrong. Uh, huge for momentum and all that, but not quite from the scoreline point of view. Um, as well as oh well also miami despite losing still managed to clinch first place because they didn't lose by that much and the team that was probably closest to taking them taking um over was also lost so miami despite losing still managed to clinch that first place spot with a plus five differential uh so that was not necessarily lucky because they built that and they managed to keep that loss close um but it was still impressive that the fact that they lost and still got first. Uh, so that was definitely a very intense matchup. Now moving on to the second matchup of the week, the Kentucky Kingers, the obviously best team in the league versus the Everglade Entes. Uh, this was a really good matchup. It was a good matchup. It's just at certain points, it's like whenever Mimikyu came in, it, it, there's like separation created. So it would be close, close, close. And then the Kingers would get a kill and it'd feel like, or they string together a couple kills in a row and it'd just be like, okay, there's the separation. Cause it was really close. Um, I believe first turn, the King was started with Snorlax uh, and the Ente started with Busharp and Snorlax went for the yawn, got it onto, I believe, oh, he switched to some, no, 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 I'm sorry. The, uh, the Ente started with Rotom Wash, switched out into Busharp and that's what got yawn. But Busharp hit Snorlax pretty hard. Uh, I'm sorry. Darmanitan who came in for the Snorlax pretty hard. That was it was funny because I, I laughed because Derek had said that he's not gonna switch to Lunala because of the weakness to Dark, so he switched to Darmanitan, which is also also weak to buy sharp. I was like, that's uh, some great decision making there. Um but after some switching, there was some switching going around and around and around. Uh Snorlax eventually did go down to Tyranitar, which uh, I, I said it last week that that you know the, the first kills of the match are, are going to be very important and the first kill went to the entes um and like i said it was really back and forth until mimikyu came in and managed to get off of swords dance uh killed by sharp this is where i say the separation got created because it killed by sharp rotom wash and tyranitar three in a row took them all down and it was just, like mimikyu alone so that put uh put everglade into a hole right away because now they're already down to three mons while the king are still are standing with five so it was it was tough because th that was that was when a lot of separation was created in the match. There's three straight kills. Uh, we haven't really seen Mimikyu's potential. Oh, by the way, week five MVP Mimikyu, mind you. Uh, we haven't really seen it at its full potential with the Kinglers yet. And then right there is when we finally like saw it to use to its best best of its ability. Uh, and honestly, the raw power just kind of shined through there. Uh, Nido King came in to counter Mimikyu, but eventually uh, the Kinglers did switch out to their mana 10 and Durant and killed Nido King. Um, and oh, Nido King, I believe, killed Corviknight first, though. Nido King did kill Corviknight, 
uh, but their man had 10 killed uh, Nido King, and it was just the raw power shining through. Like we've talked about how powerful the Kingers are. Like their team is just very, very strong, uh, and it was just the raw power of Mimikyu and Glare and their Manhattan because they they combined for five kills, um, and they just ripped through the bulk that was Everglade. And Lunala came in to finish off Palkia for the last uh, last kill of the match, and. Uh, the Kinglers walked away with a 6-3 win. Very impressive. Um, but the, I think what shined most was just finally really seeing like how powerful the Kinglers team is. Like really seeing it. Uh, I mean, we haven't really seen it since week one with Gengar. Uh, when Gengar racked up five kills. Um, but then again, nobody really expected Gengar to get five kills. So um, finally seeing that power shine through. How did you feel about this one? Um, how would you feel about the, the Kinglers performance? Well, I felt not biased. Um, <laughs> honestly, you know, uh, obviously Derek won, so congratulations to you, Derek, first of all. Um, and, you know, I agree. It, it was a very back and forth match. Um, I think I heard, and he's switching out, and he's switching <laughs> out, and he's switching out a lot from Derek. Because Foose did a lot of switching out. He did. He, <laughs> now, I'll give Foose uh, that. He played really well this match. It just yeah. mimicky. <laughs> and, you know, um, I'm sure Mimikyu fans out there would have loved to see this match. Um, and if there are Mimikyu fans out there that have seen this match, then you were probably very happy because mm -hmm. Mimikyu did really, really well. Um, the Bisharp probably surprised me the most because both of the Bisharp's types are super effective against Mimikyu. So, like, yeah. what Mimikyu can do against the Bisharp to absolutely knock it out is just awesome to me. So, um, that was probably my favorite mod to see uh, Mimikyu knock out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, very entertaining match to watch. Um, this was the one match where like no top team or bottom team was well Foose is kind of was kind of done with max with one win each but um, You know it, it was not one of those matches where it's just like if I lose this then you know What else do I have to lose it? It was it was really just one of those matches where there's nothing behind it. Yeah, and um, Yeah, it still was a very good battle to watch so I think that this was um a really good battle mm -hmm. definitely even after mimikyu got those three kills foos really tried and credit to him because he still kept the match going like it wasn't just over from there um mimikyu never died because derek did switch him out but he took down the darmanitan he was really trying to just get something going unfortunately mimikyu just just created that hole right in like kind of in the middle of the match there that just made it difficult to come back from especially i mean i've noticed that when when the entes lose rotom wash kind of early it's it a bit difficult because there's not that switching into rotom wash that you know just those sorts of things with rotom wash uh that he does like protect he did manage i think he got to protect on the dynamax but um he, he's, his Rotom Wash is very annoying, so when it goes down earlier than expected, that that's not good for them because he is he's obviously been in every match for them for a reason, and he's he's been really good for the Entes. Um, but when Rotom Wash, I, f I mean, don't get me wrong, Bay Sharp dying early too was was a very like you said to a Mimikyu of all things was interesting. But I think Rotom Wash going down was kind of a big deal there because that's that's been one of the, the Entes' better mods, but. Regardless, the uh, Kinglers win. Uh, so close. So nearly pushed them to a bye week. Uh, but they ended up in third with a 3 2 record, a plus three um, on the KD. The Entes, unfortunately, ending with a 1 4 record. Obviously, not what they, I'm assuming, not what they wanted. Uh, but regardless, I mean, no one can deny that the Entes have had a, they, they've definitely not had a bad season by any means because. All their losses have been incredibly close. Every match for them has been close, except for their win. Their win was pretty, sorry Stone, but their win was pretty, pretty hefty. So they're still very much contenders, very much contenders, which we'll talk about playoffs later, but a very good matchup there, despite the scoreline. Just ignore the scoreline. That was a really good matchup regardless. Uh, so moving on to the final match of week five, we have the Chicago score Bunnies versus the Detroit Luxuries. Uh, this was a really well played match on the Luxury's part. I mean, a really well played match on their part. Um, I think it was a it was a good match, but I think the Luxury's did well to just kind of work around, do a lot of uh, switching and things like that. 
Uh, I think a little more research from Crobats maybe would have gone a long way. <laughs> maybe would have made things a little bit different um, because there were a couple things that uh, he mentioned that he, he maybe if he had done a little quick Google search uh, <laughs> would have made things a little bit different. Uh, but there was there was in my opinion one really big kill for chicago that comes later in the match but to start off chicago starts out usually with one of their drizzle mons this time it was kyogre victoria starts with salazzo salazzo gets off a toxic on the drizzle mon uh kyogre tries to set up with calm mine um and what's and this was a nice little switch prediction here because from Salazzo, the Luxrays went to Luxray, <laughs> which was awesome to finally see the mascot. Uh, and Corbats actually did predict the wild charge from Luxray and switched out into Seismato to essentially get free switches for both teams, pretty much. Um, so eventually, I believe the Luxrays did switch into uh, Glare and Moltres. Um, and in that turn, Corbats clicked uh, Hydro Pump on Seismatoad. This is where the first thing came in where he said that Hydro Pump, uh, he thought Hydro Pump had 100% accuracy in the rain. It does not. Uh, however, he did land a crit Hydro Pump on the Glare Moltres, with, which I believe left it with like 2 HP, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. So if he killed Glare Moltres, mm, would it have made a difference in that moment? Maybe not, but uh, it did require, you know, uh, a couple extra turns and they were able to switch out. But the big thing was. Uh, I believe the Luxuries, or eventually, I think Moltres did go down in that moment. I'm not, I don't really remember off the top of my head, but uh, Alola Nattails did come in at some point, and this was just the second part came in because the Squire Buddies decided to switch out to Barrascuta, and Barrascuta got one shotted by a freeze dry. That poor, poor thing uh, got one shotted by freeze dry. For those of you who don't know, freeze dry is an ice type move, but it's also super effective against uh, water types, uh, which was genius on, uh, on, you know max's part that was a very smart move to bring and crobats did not see it coming <laughs> did not see it coming at all and it did a lot of work um on on crobats team like once freeze dry came into play it was really tough because these the luxuries were able to create some kind of separation there with freeze dry that was a big thing um i believe i don't did did not tell us die no, it didn't. No, it did not. No, it did not. Uh, eventually, Kyogre comes into Dynamax. It kills Luxray, but uh, Metagross comes into Dynamax and gets his first kill of the season, mind you, by the way, to finish Kyogre. Uh, and it goes on a little bit of a rampage because it gets the attack boost from the Max Knuckle, killing Galvantula and Seismitoad. And the Square Buddy's last mon in Kingdra falls to the freeze dry from Alola Ninetales. Now, I will say, Kingdra getting the kill on Metagross was huge. Uh, because if King, if uh, Kingdra did not get that kill, uh, Kentucky actually would have been ahead of Chicago by virtue of the K of their KD ratio. Because Chicago would have been plus two, Kentucky's plus three, so that would have pushed Kentucky to the bye week. So that kill was huge. It was a last second kill that uh, gave the Score Bunnies four kills to the Luxury six. Uh, but ultimately, regardless, the Luxuries again, and we said this about Atlanta, saying it about the Luxuries, big wins big wins for these for for these two teams um as they build momentum uh the only two teams in the league that that won both weeks both of the final weeks uh so huge momentum shift for the luxuries were you as impressed with this win as i was uh yeah honestly i, w I would say that i'm as impressed as i uh, as you were uh that was a very weird way of <laughs> leading to that um first of all i just want to say um uh, there's definitely been an example of this before, but I'm kind of slow in noticing the names because I'm worrying more about the Pokemon than anything else. But I just noticed that the Seismitoad on the score buttons is named Sue, Sue which, is, which is a <laughs> reference to. If I can find her, nah, she's like down here by my chair. That's Sue. She's she's the one with the frog quirk from <laughs> MHA. So I no I noticed that this week, kind of late. Anyways, <laughs> um. Really, really good match. Congratulations to Max, first of all. Like, mm -hmm. you pulled that off really, really well. So, congratulations to you. Um, like, absolutely not the turnout we would have expected. Um, you know. Um, see, I watched this one first, and then <laughs> I watched Quinacos, because I just wanted to see, like, if, if one of them would have one more win than the other. But they are both ending off at 3-2. At, um, mm -hmm. That's how math works. Um, 
So, you know, this is not the season that we were expecting right at the beginning when we did the first roundup before the first week. Mm -hmm. we, we said that there would be one team 4-1 and one, and it would be Crobats, um, most likely, um, and nobody was 4-1. and one. Three and two teams for the whole season, so... Um, Max really pulled this off super well. Mm. I enjoyed watching the match. Um, I had the audio coming from Crobat's perspective this week, mm. um, but I could tell that Max was probably cheering really loudly during the whole match. Um, so, you know, I can just hear it in my head how that went. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you guys have been keeping up with the verses between me and Timmy, um, you might get this reference, but Crobats and I both had bad experiences with the horsey line um, this past week, so um, <laughs> we're connected in that sort of way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, finishing off talking about this last match, I'm more than excited to see how the playoffs are gonna, to, uh, how they're gonna go, and uh, I'm excited to see, you know, how the season wraps up. Yeah, me too. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for this playoffs. Um, but before we start talking about all that, that win did leave Detroit in fifth place, so I bumped them up a spot. Uh, they end with a they end the regular season with a two and three record, negative five KD. Um, like they said, Chicago is in second with a three two record. They are plus three. Uh, both Chicago and Kentucky are plus three. However, by head to head, um, it goes KD first, then head to head. And because the Score Bunnies beat the Kinglers early in the season, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. Uh, the Score Bunnies cheated Kinglers out of a win early in the season. Um, <laughs> ah, crap! I deleted my bias. <laughs> um. <laughs> Chicago gets the bye week and get in, gets in second, which is pretty much kind of where we expected them to be. Um, and we expected, after like the first couple weeks, I think we kind of expected Miami to be up there as well. So after the couple weeks, this is kind of how we sort of saw it shaping up, uh, but we definitely got it wrong in the preseason. <laughs> uh, but speaking of the playoffs, I'm going to send it over to our man, our commissioner, Mr. Stone Family 64. He's going to give you guys a little rundown on, you know, just some closing statements on the season, uh, talking about the MVP, uh, which I think it's pretty obvious who it probably is. Uh, and also a nice playoff announcement. So send it over to him. Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is Matty as a Stone Family, and this is Lonely Hermit's channel, so I'm not going to say welcome into our channel. Welcome into this channel. Hopefully you gave me a good introduction. I usually don't make an appearance on these roundups, but I wanted to come in because I'm the founder of the league and say congratulations to everyone on a wonderful regular season. It was well played by everyone, I think. I think that the whole season went perfect. I truly do. Hopefully it helped some of the guys out. Hopefully it did what it what it was here to do, which was to have fun, have some good battles, and show you, the viewers, some good entertainment. Uh, what I'm here for today is to announce two things. I don't know what Lonely and Landon, what Josh and Landon have talked about already, but I'm going to maybe repeat some stuff maybe not but i wanted to definitely announce the final rankings and the playoffs so the final rankings will start lowest to highest bruce rodab with the everglade entes will be the sixth seed going into the playoffs he was one and four with a negative four kd Great season, great close battles. The K the record does not show how well he played this season. Next up at number five, we have Gamer Views with the Detroit Lux Race sitting at two and three with a negative five KD ratio. He started out 0-3, came back and brought it back with two fantastic wins right at the end of the season. Uh, really closing that gap. Next up, we have our Atlanta Breviary, the coaches, Stone Family 64, me, I guess. And uh, our record was 3 and 2 with a negative 2, uh, negative 2 KD ratio. We ended up flip flopping our first few games and then took two huge wins against the Chicago Score Bunnies and the Miami Dragonites. The crazy wins blew my mind. Next up, we have 
at number three, the Kentucky Kinglers, coached by Always More Videos, at three and two with a plus three. Uh, next up, we have the Chicago Score Bunnies, coached by Robats. He's got a three and two record with a plus three KD ratio, as well as the Kinglers. So you're probably asking, well, why are the Kinglers three and why is Chicago two? Chicago won the head-to-head -head against the Kentucky Kinglers, so we, to break that tie, we went with the head-to-head -head matchup. The Score Bunnies pulled out that win against the Kinglers, so the Score Bunnies get the position just above them. And lastly, number one, the Miami Dragonites, coached by Granato Gaming, uh, sitting at three and two. All four of the top four were at three and two with their records. And Renato Gaming had a plus five kill death ratio. I would also, while I'm here, like to announce the MVP before we go into how the playoffs will work. The MVP of the entire season, coached by Guanaco Gaming, the Miami Dragonites, who are ranked number one. Cinderace, Ace the Cinderace, won the MVP for the entire season with 13 kills, one death, it only died one time, killed 13 different Pokemon, and with, had a plus 12 KD ratio, which gives him the MVP. Now let's move into the playoffs really quickly. The playoffs are going to be as thus. The Everglade Entes will immediately rematch with the Kentucky Kinglers, 6 versus 3. The Atlanta Braviary will face off against the Detroit Lux Rays in a rematch of Week 1 battle, which the Atlanta Braviary won. Um, in these battles, we could see different strategies come into play. We could see different teams win. It's going to be very interesting. You're not going to want to miss it. The lowest team remaining will go on to play the Miami Dragonites in the semifinals. So, if the Everglade Entes beat the Kentucky Kinglers, Everglade will go to Miami and play Miami. If the Kentucky Kinglers win, then that means the winner of the Atlanta Braviary and Detroit Lux Rays will then face the Miami Dragonites. So it's all based off of the lowest seed playing the highest seed. So, if the Entes win, they play the Dragonites automatically. If the Kinglers win, they will play the Score Bunnies, and Atlanta and Detroit will play Miami. So hopefully that's easy to understand. It's just like uh, NFL playoffs, so if, you, if you're a little bit confused with it, check out NFL playoff rules. They will ex be explained very clearly, probably better than I'm able to explain it, but it's based off of the NFL playoffs. Um, for the MVP of the playoffs, the way that's going to be determined is every team will play, and once the championship is decided, the team with, that wins the championship will also win the MVP. Whichever Pokemon on the championship team has the highest KD ratio, the best KD ratio, will win the MVP, the playoff MVP. Um... And we are also going to have a reward for the team that wins the championship this year. At the end of the season, I will be purchasing, with help of some of the other coaches, a trophy for the championship team to have. Uh, as of this season, there will not be an MVP trophy to be given out. But that could be something to talk about in the future. It was something I was thinking about. But this year, we are definitely going to give a trophy to the championship team. Lonely Hermit does a great job of making MVP stick uh, cards for each MVP for the week. We've all gotten cards for if our one of our Pokemon won MVP. Hopefully, that can be uh, arranged. The, that a card can be made for the playoff MVP as well and that can be given to the coach. That is all I've got to talk about. Hope you all enjoy either enjoyed what was before I said of the roundup, and if there's anything after what I've said of the roundup, hopefully you enjoy the rest of the roundup. 
I'm going to send it back to Josh and Landon, and hope you all have a great day. Until next time, enjoy the battles, guys, and peace. No, I don't say peace. Later. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stone fam. Uh, that is everything. As, as he mentioned, uh, obviously, I think we all kind of saw it coming. Uh, again, after the first <laughs> first couple weeks, uh, Ace Descender is. I have no idea what he said. Josh didn't show me the video. <laughs> you know what he said. <laughs> I'll explain it well, a little bit. Man, right now. I agree with every point that you've made. <laughs> <laughs> so Ace Descender is obviously your season MVP. Um, he, I mean, killed it. It only died once. It was brought to all five matches. It only died once. <laughs> it got 13 kills as well. Nearly averaged three kills a game. So very well deserved. And congratulations to the Dragonites for having the MVP. He called it earlier in his, in his preseason interview uh, that Cinderace would be his MVP candidate. But speaking on the playoffs, obviously Stone kind of explained it there. But uh, let's give it another quick rundown. Um, we mentioned Miami and Chicago have bye weeks. Uh, but the third and sixth place will be playing each other. And the fourth and fifth place will be playing each other. Uh, so obviously that means the first matchup is a rematch already back to back We'll be seeing this matchup. So it's gonna be the Kentucky Kinglers versus the Everglade Entes the number three seed in Kentucky the number six seed in Everglade um, <laughs> a Rematch right away like right away. We're already seeing these two go against each other again uh, If Kentucky does win this match, they are guaranteed to be playing Miami um, If Everglade win the match, they are guaranteed to be playing Chicago um, so We'll have a guaranteed matchup depending on how this one goes, uh, but a, a rematch very interesting This is the first obviously the first rematch of this of well, there's another rematch But this one's back-to-back. -back. This is the first back-to-back -back rematch of the season um, And obviously the Kingers kind of ran away with it through Mimikyu um, In this matchup from week 5 like we talked about but don't expect the same tactics to come out of the Entes do not expect the same tactics from them. I don't expect the same uh, tactics from the Kinglers either. I don't think both of them will even bring, not necessarily like remotely the same strategy, but I think they're definitely gonna switch it up a bit. Um, obviously it worked well for the Kinglers, but he, Derek's gotta know that, that Foose is a smart battler. He's gonna change his setup. He's gonna try some different things. And more importantly, in my opinion, keep Rotom Wash alive longer than what he did. Um, Cause unfortunately it, it did fall pretty early. Um, so this is a really intense matchup. Um, I'm 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 tempted to lean towards Everglade because they have a little bit more of an understanding of what um, what the Kinglers are going to be bringing. Uh, so I, I'm curious because I feel like Everglade is going to be the one that's that we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on. Because obviously they I mean they did lose, but that usually leads to some kind of strategy change. So I'm more curious about Everglade, and I'm. If I was Derek, I'd be pretty worried because, like we mentioned, all of Foose's losses have been really close. So I'm kind of leaning towards Everglade because, again, I think the strategy, I think Foose is going to come up with a great strategy to try and fix some of the mistakes. I'm sure he's going to watch that match back a few times. I'm sure they both are, to be honest, but um, it's obviously only a week in between. Well, I don't know when they did their battle, but it's obviously only a week in between uh, matchups. So is gonna be a really really intense one i think this might be a very very intense matchup what do you think about this one right here he said a team other than Derek could win guys he's evolved i said I, i'm pretty sure i chose i chose someone over the king i don't know who i'm pretty sure i have <laughs> anyways um you know what? I think that at this point in the season, like Josh said, his matches have, his losses all have been super duper close. And uh, I, I have to give it to him. Like this, this previous match, like, you know, that was really, really intense. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if I had to give it to anybody, I'd have to give it to, to Foose. I just think he's more unpredictable right now. <laughs> I think between the two, yeah. it, it's just that he's more <laughs> unpredictable. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, Derek, but like, I, he he literally just fought you this past week, and he's gonna be like, all right, I get a retry. Let's yeah, let's freaking go. Let's let's figure out how I can beat him this time. So you know, he's he's definitely gonna do some research to come up with some sort of strategy to try again. Um, mm. So 
watch your Kentuckian back, my dude. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure the Kinglers will have something different too. I'm sure they'll bring something different. Yeah. But, but mm. Foose had a better look, I guess. Has as a, I don't know. I feel like it's better to lose sometimes when you're gonna rematch someone because you kind of you know what's not gonna work so i think that's an advantage heading into this matchup and like we said he's just unpredictable right now so i'm gonna i'm gonna lean towards the everglade that's gonna be close though i think that one's gonna be a lot closer no six three here six five hundred percent um but like we mentioned that is gonna mean a date with crowbats again uh, which was the back way back you guys remember week one way back then uh, that's gonna be a week one rematch right there so that's gonna be fun uh, speaking of oh when did they play shoot when did atlanta versus detroit happen week uh, i can double check um uh, <laughs> that week two two yeah it was week two yeah uh, that's what i was saying okay i was like two, two? <laughs> so this is obviously <laughs> a rematch of a week two matchup uh the atlanta bravery walked away with a win in that one that's when the luxuries were in a little bit of a skid um when they had three straight that they, their, their scores are so like satisfying like three straight i know they were losses but three straight six three losses and then two straight six four wins that's just so satisfying um uh, but obviously a lineup right really walked away with a six three win um in that first matchup uh, again it was the kind of trap where max tried setting up with glary moltres and eventually just you know the match just completely flipped on him again however the luxuries to be fair though both these teams actually i was gonna say the luxuries on a bit of role but both these teams are on quite the roll right now uh matt is finally kind of starting to lean on the trick room kind of starting to really get into the groove with that and it's paying off obviously he's got back-to-back -back wins uh so that is really really helping um but again detroit they both beat crowbats they both be arguably you know we talked about potentially the best battle in the league i, I guess uh, even though he's in second oh, i'm just kidding i guess <laughs> what a sucker uh so this is gonna be really intense because these two teams that are hot right now like we said these are the two teams that ended the last two weeks with wins so this is gonna be a really intense matchup um but i i don't know it's tough because atlanta has beat atlanta beat first and second detroit beat second and six however Everglade, obviously, we keep saying it. They're just so good despite the record. Um, so both teams beating really tough other tough opponents. So this is gonna be very, 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 very close. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the lower seed. I'm kind of leaning towards the try. I kind of, I kind of want to see a Cinderella sort of story coming from the the five and six. Um, because especially Detroit, because Detroit struggled for the first three weeks in the season pretty bad, and then just kind of flipped it and came up with two really big wins. Um, I'm gonna lean towards Detroit, I guess, just for the Cinderella story, just for the the lower seed to win, um, because that's gonna be very close. I, I see that being like an early six five, six four. So, well, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm probably like like you said. And like we've talked about, these are the two teams that defeated like seemingly impossible to beat teams uh, back like back to back weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so like Max beating Crobats and then beating Guanaco is is a major thing because this man like beat them like back to back and like I don't know I, I'm trying to say something here in my mind. So I'm gonna say what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying that, you know, Max tearing it up like that definitely makes me think that, you know, he has a pretty strong chance uh, to win this match. Um, he's got plenty, plenty of Pokemon that, you know, could fare pretty well against Matt's Pokemon, but like, that can go either way. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like Max has like a really strong chance to, to pull this one off. Um, it's it's really hard not to agree with Josh on some of these matches because like Makes me look bad by going first like come on man. How could you not? <laughs> Sometimes it's just like I it's hard for me because they're gonna be like you're just copying Josh and I'm like no, I'm not I'm just making my own decision. It's the same as him <laughs> Anyways, I'm rooting for Max this week. Sorry Matt. Ooh, you're still cool though <laughs> We're still we're so good, right? We're so good. <laughs> yeah, we're still friends, right? <laughs> Um, no, I, 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 I'm burning your sweater. <laughs> no, you're out of the league. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I will say though, if Atlanta win, they got a date again with Miami and they, they beat them once. They're giant killers, so it's very possible that if Atlanta win, they got a they got a nice chance to get into that championship matchup. So there's that to think about. But I'm gonna lean towards Detroit in that one. Uh, if Detroit win, they have to face Miami again, which is interesting because Everglades lost to Chicago and Detroit lost to Miami. So if both those teams do end up winning, they'll be facing opponents that they did lose to. Um, so that's going to be really interesting. Then again, Kentucky, I believe, actually, wait a minute. Of these three, of these four teams left, I think Atlanta is the only one that beat both of them. Yeah, that beat both of the top opponents. Detroit obviously beat Chicago. But both Kentucky and Everglade lost to Miami and Chicago. So interesting little fact right there. So hmm, that's going to be very interesting to see. Obviously, next week, that's after this week, uh, upcoming week. But those are your matchups. Kentucky versus Everglade, Atlanta versus Detroit. Unfortunately, we only get two matches this week. Uh, but they're going to be incredibly intense. And the playoffs are kicking off, ladies and gentlemen. They are kicking off off i'm super freaking excited uh and i can't wait to see how these matches are going to go but that's gonna be it for this week's roundup thank you guys so much for tuning in i really appreciate it of course check out all the coaches in the description down below go support a team support the league as a whole if you don't want to support a specific team if you love every single content creator here and you just want to support the league as a whole that's perfectly okay uh just try and watch all the matches that'd be greatly appreciated like i said channels are all down below for all the coaches in the league i have been lonely hermit this is my channel so if you'd be so kind as to hit that big red subscribe button i really appreciate it and also check out my other socials in the description twitter instagram all that good stuff and of course my co-host inferno man uh, his stuff, his YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, everything is all down in the description down below as well. Go hit his big red subscribe button. Uh, that sounded dirty. Um, <laughs> so be sure to check out all those links in the description down below. And of course, get hype, get some hype, get some hype in the comments for the playoffs. I'm super, super, super excited. Any last words, my co hosts? The next time you see me during one of these roundups, I will be in the dorms. So <gasps> dun, dun. In the gulag. <laughs> in the gulag. <laughs> in the ghoulie. Uh, <laughs> so we will see you guys next week with the playoff round one roundup. That I'm going to have to change the way that sounds. But <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Super excited for these matches. And like I said, check out the links in the description. So we see you guys then. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.